Hello, this is Hans van der Kwas, Senior Lecturer at IG Delft Institute for Water Education. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to use the Lake Flood tool from the Processing Toolbox. It's a Saga tool. To use this tool uh, we start with a Lake Polygon and a Digital Elevation model. And in raster analysis it is very important that the inputs, the raster inputs have the same dimensions. So we are not going to use the rasterize function for the lake, but we are going to use the clip function from Saga, just to make sure that the rasters that the tool needs have the same dimensions. So go to the processing toolbox and we search for clip, and there are many clip functions, but we use the clip raster with polygon from Saga, the DTM as an input, and the lake polygon as a, the polygon that we want to use to clip. And let's call the output lake raster. In this way we are sure that the clipped raster has uh, the same properties. And there is the result. Now we go to the raster calculator and we're going to add the lake raster and we say if it has values, so let's say larger or equal than minus 9999, put it in brackets, then if that is true, then do times 100. So if it's true, it's 1, and then all the values will end up with the value 100. And if it's false, it will be 0, and then times 100 will be 0. So this will result in all the lake pixels to have a value of 100, which will be our first lake level that we're going to use for the flooding. Let's save the output and let's call it level 100. Tiff. And now an important step, we need to choose the layer extent of the DTM, otherwise it will have a, not the same dimensions and we can't use it in the tool later, it will give errors. Now we have all the inputs for the tool. So the tool we are going to use is the Lake Flood tool from Saga. Here you see that our level 100 uh, has no specified projection. So let's specify it first as good practice and then use the lake flood tool as an input. We use the DTM and we're going to flood it from the level 100 pixels and let's call the output of the lake that it will create lake 100. That will simply be the elevations of the lake and flood 100 for all the areas that uh, are above the flood line. There we go. And of course it makes more sense if we're gonna style it. So I choose single band pseudo color. And what I would like is to have all the uh, flooded pixels blue and everything that's above to have the elevation model colors that we have below. So if I use this clip out of range values, it will make sure that everything above a certain value that I specify will not be uh, visualized. So let's use that to create classes. And I use here a value of 100 because that was our threshold for the flood. And then everything that is flooded will have value 100. And all the other things are clipped to the elevation. But the elevation model uh, is not stretched in a way that we can see a lot of elevation differences. So let's also stretch it from value 100 to the maximum. And in this way, we see now the area that is flooded. And I can repeat the steps for different flood levels. And here you see the result. So with these tools, we can uh, flood from specifying a certain lake level and then visualize it in a proper way to see which areas are uh, flooded. Of course this can't replace a full hydraulic model, but it's a quick indication to uh, simulate uh, inundations. I hope you liked the video. If you want to see more of these videos, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And for free tutorials, have a look at GISopencourseware.org.